having heard where everybody came from and how they connected the school, what was it that you found unique about the school, both when you began there, what brought you there, and as you're as you spent more time with the classes, the school, the students, the faculty? Gerb, I'll start with you because you've uh, you're okay. of my era. <laughs> yes, a little bit before. Um, yeah, so this is. 1972 to 1976 is, you know, my time at James. And just to put that in context, it was a period of great social change, as I mentioned earlier about uh, the anti-war. So I actually graduated high school in 1968, and I was successfully able to resist the draft uh, for four years um, through a lot of, you know, uh, education and understanding and support. When I started James, it was four years after uh, high school. And so the my contemporaries who had been drafted, who had joined and who had come back from Vietnam were the people that I kind of hung with at James. And these were the most active anti-war people on campus were the veterans. And, uh, and because I was the same age, I was attracted to that community. So there was a lot of uh, uh, social uh, activity in terms of uh, ending the war. That really uh, colored my first two, three years of being at James. We made films around that issue. We traveled to um, uh, Washington, D.C. on a couple of occasions. Uh, Nixon was inaugurated in 1973, and the people, the community of filmmakers from Grand Valley, we went, we documented this, we came back and did a presentation to different local high schools, a, a multimedia show uh, about the, the, um, about the war. And uh, so that was really, you know, and, and the other part that really is important, I think, historically, as I mentioned earlier, cable television was coming to the country. And actually, the whole country got involved in this talk of what does it mean that we go from three channels to 500 channels in some community? And it became a First Amendment issue, freedom of speech, that people should have access to this. And so what got invented, and this was a national conversation, <laughs> Congress was involved, the, the 1976 Cable Act, a student group and a citizen group uh, who were educated about the importance of cable to a democracy, to people having access, uh, got together and we educated and lobbied the Grand Rapids City Commission. Cable companies would come and negotiate with the city because they needed to use the right-of-ways and anyway, this established a really good model in Grand Rapids for public access TV, and it's still going on today. Um, and I, I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of the fact that uh, my education had to do with social involvement. It wasn't this sort of ivory tower kind of thing. It was really involved in the community. And at that time, there were so many other areas, uh, environmental studies, uh, urban planning, those were all things going on at James at the time. It was really at the forefront of all the sort of revolutions and alternatives that were happening. And uh, it was really exciting. And then from there, I just got into, there was also a film program. And it was called 60 Millimeter 1 and 60 Millimeter 2. And 60 Millimeter 1 was learning how to use Bolex and shoot film, expose film, and actually edit film. And then 16 millimeter two, it upped a little bit to doing, uh, you know, what we call double system and uh, sound, uh, and it became a little more sophisticated. And and it was out of that program that the the Grand Valley also William James developed a a, a study abroad program, and I got to go for a semester and study at the Italian Institute of Cinematography in Rome for and I. I was there for almost eight months. Uh, Twelve of us went, and it was a pilot program. The Grand Valley paid for the entire amount, and uh, it was an amazing uh, experience to go. And that's really where I kind of made my career as a filmmaker, director of photography, and 
upon graduation, that's how I, you know, made my living for the next uh, 30 years. And I, I still work in the media. So I'd like to jump to a, a faculty perspective. So I'll start with uh, Tony, because you obviously had experience at other schools. What was it you found that was unique about the school and about the program when you came to Grand Valley? Yeah, so my experience at other schools was actually as a student. Grand Valley was my first and only full-time teaching job. Um, so when I came here to teach, I was a total newbie. But um, yeah, I, I um, did my master's degree at the University of Michigan and my PhD at Northwestern University. And what was important to both of those programs that I attended previously to coming to Grand Valley was the idea of combining theory and practice so we were both learning how to use the tools. Um, and, you know, that's an important part of it, especially back in the world of film um, production, because it's a pretty exacting craft. But um, that the theoretical perspectives, the history, um, the, the critical studies part is an important part of what um, students need. And it kind of connects to what Gerb was talking about in terms of understanding the importance and significance of media and film, um, that you're doing something significant with this, um, well, you know, whatever mode that you choose to work in, and that hopefully you understand the power of the medium and, and use it um, to create um, significant work. And I would say that was one of the through lines for um, William James to the School of Communications because William James the motto, which all the students see when they're in Lake Superior Hall, is um, no impression without expression. In other words, you don't really retain what you're learning unless you're doing something with it, and so and hopefully doing something significant with it. So William James' idea was carried through into the School of uh, Communications when it formed in 1984, um, and in fact, a lot of the faculty who uh, taught in William James were the ones who created the School of Communications. And that um, idea of theory and practice kind of evolved into integrating liberal and professional education. So that was kind of what the School of Communication was all about. Um, and so that kind of theory and practice, doing it and also analyzing it, criticizing it, learning the history, understanding the social context, being aware of the power of these powerful media um, so that that was all um, part of what carried through the different iterations if, if you will of um, uh, film and video production at grand valley and uh yeah i mostly did the film studies part but when i started what was really cool about it was i got to teach just about everything in the curriculum um, before we kind of became bigger and more specialized so that was really fun as a teacher to, to both teach film studies and film production, um, which you don't have the opportunity to do at a lot of other places. We'll get back to a couple of students yet, but I might as well stay in this tack with uh, John. Uh, I'm not sure where you came from coming to Grand Valley, but tell me about what is it you found when you came to Grand Valley that was unique, what was different for you? Um, yeah, I, I was an adjunct for uh, at Columbia College, Chicago, and then I went to uh, Southern Illinois, Carbondale, got my MFA there, and I was became a lecturer uh, there before I came up to Grand Valley. But I, I, you know, going off of what Tony said, I remember the School of Com thinking that was very unique uh, because in Southern Illinois and at and at Columbia College, you know, it was very much the film program was off on its own, which is fine, but it was very much like a little silo that that did its own thing, and and the School of Communications blended film and video production, with television broadcasting, with journalism, comm studies, and so on. And I thought that was actually very interesting, partly because, you know, I, you know, I, I did a little journalism when I was in school working for the school newspaper, and I did television, and I did, you know, regular motion pictures. Uh, and so I liked the idea that they were all blended together. And I think at some point, it got so big that it became a little unwieldy in that regard. But when I started, it was, I thought it was unique. Now, Stephanie, you're the most recent grad, so let's jump up to, to your era. Um, what was it that, I'm not sure if it was something that you recognized before you came to Grand Valley or really appreciated when you got there or both, but tell us about your, what is it that really stuck out? What made it unique for you? 
Yeah, I was, I've been thinking about this question a lot. And I think um, for me, I think the the faculty is what make it so unique. Um, I know that uh, the relationships that I was able to develop and connect with the faculty, those are lifelong. Um, I am still going to my advisor and <laughs> for life advice and uh, continue to have that relationship today. Um, I remember when I, I think I was a sophomore, so it was my second year in the program, and uh, just chit-chatting with Kim Roberts. And um, I said, Kim, do you have any children? And she goes, I don't have kids. I don't have time. I have all of you guys. And I was like, oh, yes, that's you are our mother. <laughs> so I think back to that and how that kind of um, really impacted me and made my time more meaningful. Um, I mean, I can even think back to working with John, working with Tony and having moments of just total film school meltdowns as you do when you're in film school and having them be there for me was something that I don't think I would have been able to get anywhere else. Um, and like I said, um, my connection with the faculty has maintained uh, since I graduated almost eight years ago, nine years ago now. Um, and uh, it's something that I think very unique to the program. I know that I haven't had that experience um, anywhere elsewhere, and um, I, I'm so thankful for it. I want to finish up with Greg. Um, you were really there at the school at a time when both the school and a lot of society was changing. Media was becoming a lot more part of our lives, a lot more awareness, more things going on. Technology was changing. What was it about it? And you had come from a different school, so you had some other perspectives. What was it about Grand Valley that really stuck out to you or continues to? What, I, what really stood out to me was just how self-directed we were all expected to be. And the School of Calm itself was very much on its own, just doing its own thing. And as students, we were expected to be that kind of self-directed force of nature. You know, we were given remits and we went on and did our thing. And that came down to everything. You know, all the technology at the School of Calm was open to us and it was there for our taking. And when I first got there, I asked, what, what, what's that device in the back of the room there? Oh, that's the optical printer. I'm like, oh, how do, you, how do you use that? Well, here's the manual, figure it out. And we were given all of this, all of these toys and this huge sandbox. And we were just told to go forth and, and do our thing. And I think that's what really, really helped me in my later pursuits because I knew that I had within me the, the power and the confidence to go forth and do whatever I needed to do without asking permission or looking for approval necessarily. And I think that's what, what made, uh, made my experience at Grand Valley unique. We were very much on our own and within our group, within our own filmmaker group, we got very close and we were kind of doing our own thing. And it was pretty fantastic. And Tony, you had a thought that you wanted to add in here? Yeah, I wanted to follow up on something that Stephanie said, actually, which is about the faculty in the program. Um, and I've had the opportunity and pleasure to meet many of them um, <laughs> over the years. And in fact, somehow I became like the senior faculty person for my last few years. But um, of course, we've had fabulous students, and um, that goes without saying, hopefully it speaks for itself, but we have also benefited from a lot of talented, dedicated, and hardworking teachers who haven't um, always been as supported as they might have been by the university in terms of resources, so we've actually done a lot with kind of not, um, well, I will say limited resources over time. Um, but we've been supported and energized by a lot of visit visiting faculty members, a lot of adjuncts, 
a number of whom have actually been alums. So they, uh, I mean, I think it's a wonderful way that so many people have given back to our program and to our university. And I just wanted to mention a few names. Gerb here, of course, um, Suzanne, who's in the background there, um, one of the producers of the show, Melissa Bowman, Pete Porter, Maggie Anarino, Gretchen Vintage, Carrie Vanderhoff, Joel Petrikas, Spencer Everhart, Ryan Copping, Sarah Vesley Naraki. There are others that I've missed who are adjuncts. Um, and these are all people who went through the program and um, then, 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 you know, dedicated their talents to keeping it strong. So that's, I just wanted to put in that word of appreciation for all those people who really energized the program over the years. <laughs> 